Hello devs and welcome to the channel. In this video I wanna share with you how I created this beautiful PlayStation 5 interface using React. As you can see there are plenty of transitions happening, all interactive. And in the future we will also connect this interface to our Steam library so we can actually launch games using it. Let's get started with the interface. Let's start by creating a new project with vid, npm create vid, name it ps5, choose react, typescript, cd into ps5 and open it with your favorite editor. Let's install the dependencies, I will use pnpm to make it a bit faster. I will also install SAS because we will use SCSS here. Let's now also clean up the project quickly. First rename all the CSS files to use SCSS extension. Remove all the assets we don't need. Delete anyway. Remove the link in index. Remove unnecessary HTML, imports, ok, don't need this in public as well. Also in styles, let's get rid of pretty much everything except for the root configuration. Let's leave it as is for now. And for body, just set margin to zero. In app TSX, let's create our container, class name PS5 container and let's set up some styles for it. Let's remove also the app CSS styles for PS5 container, set up width and height to 100% of the viewport, display flex, flex direction column, background black and overflow hidden. Let's now quickly run the project to make sure everything works as expected. npm run dev, ok, we got a black background. Let's now bring in some assets we will use, I will copy them over from existing project put them into public folder. As you can see I got two folders like games is for games images like for each game I have two images one for the card and one for the background. I got sounds with background music, startup sound and a menu click sound. And I also got a border SVG which will be used as an SVG mask to create this rounded border around the active card. Let's now define a TypeScript interface for the game. I will create a Types folder and game.ts inside it. So export interface game. So each game will have a name, it will have a background and a logo, which will serve as a card background. And now let's copy over some definitions for the games from the existing project. So I got them defined here, just to save some time. Ok, we got the games. We will also need some constants for rendering the list of cards. Let's create a constants TypeScript file and export few TypeScript variables. So first of all uh, we have card size, the size of the square card it will be 128 pixels, export const active card size will be 200 pixels as it's larger, export const uh, card gap, we have gaps between the cards, let's make default one as 10 pixels. 
the next one is active card gap which is a bit larger if we take a look you see we have like around 10 pixels here and around 20 pixels here right so uh yeah 20 pixels and the next one uh, will be the offsets of the list from top and from left we'll treat the first active the actual active card as the starting point for the offset uh, and as we can see like uh, there are few inactive cards that are visible behind the active card so uh, i think it's around 1.3 of the size of the card plus the gap so let's make it uh, let's call it cards offset x so it will be card size plus card gap multiplied by 1.3 and just offset y cards offset y will be 128 pixels from top so the majority of our list rendering will be managed by TypeScript, but for these two card size and active card size, we'll also need to make them available in CSS. So for that, let's go to app TSX and define style as an object where we have variable card size which would be equal to let's make a string uh, and it would be card size pixels and the next one is active card size active card size so you see typescript is complaining it doesn't respect CSS variables passed like this, so we can just put as record string string, which is true. So now we can access those variables in CSS as well. So we can set the width and height of the cards using CSS, as well as the active card size. Now that we have all the variables in place, we can finally start creating our components. Let's start by creating game cards list component game cards list at tsx export function game cards list and oh it's not exported interface game cards list props so it will be uh, games array which we defined the game over here it will have optional active card active index yeah just let's name it active index number and on active index change which will be a callback when we navigate to some card okay in the structure games active index on active index change and let's return partial and then render quickly a list of images just to see that everything works as expected games that map game let's return uh, div plus name game card we will later refactor it to a separate component, but for now, let's just do it this way. Image source game 
that logo don't forget to put the key which will be game.name uh, and let's just render it inside our app inside ps5 container and games will be the games that we defined over here okay okay so overflow hidden we can see let's add some styles so for styles let's create a component that scss yeah obviously remove this import it let's define the game card as position absolute and for the image uh, for the image we don't need much uh, for width and height let's make it uh, from variable card size that we pass down height also card size Okay, let's see. Okay, now they are covering each other. First, let's add an additional class on the active card. So uh, you could use class names, but here it's a very simple use case. So we could just do like this. And if actually index here as well, if index active index, Uh, then it will be active otherwise empty string and for the active card let's set up some styles so if the card is active as well then we have width of var active card size which we passed down as a CSS variable and height as well Let's set the default value for active index to zero. Now we can see that one active image is larger than the others. Now we can start working on the actual offsets of the cards. If we go back to the finished project, we can see that the position of the active card kind of remains constant. But the leftmost card moves to the left. So if we find the offset X of the leftmost card, we can go forward and get the positions of all the rest of the cards. So first step would be to find the position of the first card. So let's define offset X, which would be cards offset x minus active index multiplied by card size plus card gap so cards offset x we define this constant over here it's 1.3 uh, cards plus card gaps uh, to the right of the left corner of the screen Let's assign the styles to the cards. So style equals an object with the property transform where we got translate X uh, would be equal to offset X. Don't forget pixels here and translate y would be of a variable of a constant cards offset y pixels so this is the starting position of our cards when the active index is zero
So now, while running through the list of cards, we need to offset each of them. Mm, let's first assign to constant card and return it later. And to modify the offset, oh, let's actually do this way to make it cleaner a bit. Uh, offset X plus equals to card size plus card gap, the default behavior. But if the card comes just before the active card, we need to offset X to card size as well, plus this time active card gap. So, because the gap is actually larger between the non-active card and active cards than just between regular cards. Else if index is just equal to active index, we need to offset x plus equal active card size plus active card gap. And the default case is here. Okay, let's save and see. Yeah, we got the offsets set up correctly. Now let's make the things move. So for that, first we need to dispatch this callback on click. So it's optional. And index would be the current index. And let's use it in up. We can use state active index set active index equals use state from zero. Let's pass in active index and on active index change we can set active index to i let's check okay no transitions but that's easy to fix let's go to uh, game cards list and set transition all 0 0.15 seconds is out okay looks good i think i don't like a bit how the images are positioned within the containers so let's fix that like the, they should be probably uh, at the top because the title is normally at the top of the image uh, just a quick fix line items center we actually flex start and for the image, let's make width 100% and object fit contain, or oh, actually cover. Yeah, looks much better. Let's add the game backgrounds, so that when we change uh, the active game, the background of the page changes to the game background. Okay, let's go to AppTSX, create another div, class name game bg, style equals to a new object, background image with a URL of uh, games, active index dot bg okay let's set the styles for the game bg so width and height 100 percent background size cover 
background repeat no repeat background position center let's see looks good yeah but we are missing the transitions when background changes uh, I remind you in this uh, application we have this smooth transitions so let's add them now for transitions I'm gonna use a small library uh, it helps to animate things in and out when they appear on the screen so I will install react cross fader this is a library I uh, wrote specifically for this use case so feel free to use it in your projects it's actually like have has almost zero downloads but who knows like I mean it it does the job and does it pretty well uh, has some documentation so yeah why not use it it's very simple to utilize so we just wrap into crossfader our element uh, and uh, just make sure like yeah let's check first yeah like now that index uh, is uh, covering our images like so just to resolve this let's also wrap uh, game cards list into its container and name it game cards list container and just set the that index for it to something okay yeah now transition is very simple like that's the default transition just fading in and out normally uh, let's make it so that it's actually fading in from the left and from or from the right the like depending on which direction we move so if we look back to the docs like the way we can do it is just uh, to define the keyframes and define those CSS variables like optionally right so we fade in animation uh, when the new uh, background appears on the screen fade out animation and delays if we need any so for that we, we need to uh, assign a class to our crossfader let's name it bg container and uh, set the fade in animation to game bg fade in 0 0.5 seconds and is is yeah uh, and let's define the keyframes actually define it on the same level it doesn't matter really but uh, to make things uh, consistent bg fade in so 0% we're gonna make opacity zero uh, transform let's make it move uh, from uh, left to right minus 40 pixels and let's make uh, it at first scaled down a bit so 0 0.99 and 100% it's gonna be opacity one and transform Translate x zero pixels and scale one. Okay, uh, let's check. Yeah, as you can see, like images are fading in from left to right. Yeah, now we can make actually different transitions for when we move to the left to the previous uh, game and another transition when we move to the next game let's do it
in order to implement this behavior we would need to somehow store the previous active index and to decide whether uh, our list was moved to the left or to the right so for that we will need to create another uh, actually the first and the only one custom hook let's create it it will store uh, and give us the previous value of some state so let's call it use previous export function use previous it will be generic of type t accept value of type t and return value of type t so we will store rf of type t as well or undefined the default value is undefined and so never read okay uh, and we will use effect so whenever value changes we will assign ref that current to the value and just return ref that current to undefined yeah because if if it's just the first change in the value like there is not gonna be previous okay now let's make use of this custom hook in apptsx const let's name it previous active index use previous and pass in active index and also create a boolean variable is next which gonna be uh, so if previous active index is less than active index like and defaulted to zero then it's moving next basically yeah otherwise it's moving backwards and based on this is next we gonna set up an additional class on our crossfader let's first convert the class name into template string and add a variable based on is next so if it's is next we assign next class otherwise previous and in app as css if it's next we gonna make it into uh, so this is for previous actually uh, and let's duplicate it and name it as next and from the opposite side it will come so for next one game bg fade in next yeah and from previous game bg fade in previous so okay uh, let's check so when we move to the right it comes from the right when we move to the left it comes from the left and I see also this blink of black because um, it's fading out actually faster than it fades in so let's also uh, modify the fade out delay property so we don't see this black uh, so fade out delay 0 0.2 seconds actually we can make it on the top level of bg container let's check yeah now it's better now if you noticed the finished project has this uh, gradient fading from uh, bottom left to top right 
so it's black and it's there to make the text and the button stand out more. Let's add it as well. So let's get back to the code. Let's create an after pseudo element. Content nothing. Display block. And uh, width and height 100%. And background linear gradient 20 degrees RGBA from fully opaque 0, 0, 0, 1 alpha channel 1 right and to RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, and yeah of course we need to make uh, the parent element uh, position relative and this one position absolute of course and set the width and height explicitly on the parent element uh, and as well uh, game bg should be position absolute okay let's check Okay, I think we missed the Z index. Yeah, let's add it as well. So it's on top of the uh, image. Let's set it up to 10, for example. Okay, we missed something else. Uh, pa -pa -pa Position absolute, 100%. Width and height, 100%. What if we set it to 50? Okay. Now it works, just that index problem. Yep, now it's time to add some text. So if we look at the finished project, we have this text floating next to the active card. So it's always in the same place, just animates. Uh, so we can probably add it on the top level of our application, not attaching to the actual card. So in AppTSX, Let's add a div class name card title uh, with some text which would be games active index dot name and we need to position it correctly so first of all make uh, position absolute for card title. Also, uh, now need to set the styles and we actually can use our constant to position it properly next to the active card because we have offsets here, the sizes. So we need to position it next to the active card on the bottom of it. So const uh, card title x equals to um, cards offset x plus active card size plus active card gap and const card title y equals cards offset y plus active card size and minus because now it would be at the very very bottom uh, minus basically the font size which would be I guess 2 RAM, we could set it to 32. Uh, and let's add it to styles. Style equals new object uh, top and template string card title y pixels and left template string card title x pixels. Now let's also set some additional styles on card title so that index would be 100 so it's on top of the background and then uh, we can set white space to no wrap to make sure uh, words don't wrap there and font size to rem and color to white. Okay, let's check. Ok, 
Okay, text is here. Uh, the line height, I think, is the issue because uh, it's not exactly aligned with the bottom of the card. So let's fix that in our index.css. CSS, we have this line height to 1.5. Let's set it just to 1. Okay, now it's perfectly aligned to the bottom. Mm, I think we should also align it to the gap correctly. Let's just manually add some magic number for now. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why this happens, but some miscalculation. Okay, uh, maybe 10. Yeah, that's better. Now let's also make it animatable then. So crossfade, crossfader, right? Uh, let's put this inside and also transfer all the styling to the crossfader container instead. And leave div as is. Let's check. Okay, it fades in and out. Now let's add some animations. We would reuse the same strategy as with uh, background crossfading. So let's go to card title and fade in animation would be, uh, let's call it card title fade in. We'll make it 0.5 seconds long and with easing and fade out animation, card title fade out and the same easing and duration. So let's define the keyframes, keyframes, card title fade in, 0%, it would be opacity 0, and let's make it, let's make it fly from uh, left to right, translate, transform, sorry, translate x minus, let's make it 20 pixels, 100% opacity 1 transform translate x 0 pixels and straight away for the fade out keyframes let's make it ok card title fade out 0% would be uh, opacity 1 transform and let's make it fly uh, from the current position so translate y 0 pixels and 100% would be opacity 0 and transform translate y it will fly upwards so minus 20 pixels let's check okay looks pretty close to what we have in the finished product. Now we can add the game title with a play button. As you can see over here, it also has fade in and fade out animations. Let's go to code, open up TSX and define another crossfader. It will have a class name of uh, play container h1 inside of it and we can copy the game name from the game card and the button inside of it play so let's go to app as css and inside ps5 container at the very bottom let's set up some styles so it will have position absolute, left uh, 200 pixels and from the bottom it will have 350 pixels. Now for H1 it will have white color, font size of 3.2 RAM, margin bottom 20 pixels, 
and don't forget white space, no wrap, so it's all in one line text. Now we will add some styles for the button, so width would be 240 pixels, height of 50 pixels, it will have border none, uh, background will be uh, this color, so 0.3 opacity, kind of grayish blue. Uh, also for border radius it will be 30 pixels, font size will be 1 RAM, color white. Mm, let's see. Okay. Also, the font weight should be bold. Okay. Looks pretty close to what we got in the finished project. Now need to add some transitions. Let's go back to app as CSS and define some animations. So for fade in animation variable we will have the keyframes name play fade in uh, with 0.3 seconds duration and easing for fade out animation variable we will set play fade out uh, 0.1 seconds duration and easing as well. Let's set up the keyframes now. So, keyframes play fade in 0%. It will have a transform translate y 40 pixels. So, it will come from bottom opacity uh, 0 and 100%. It will have transform translate y 0 pixels and opacity 1. For fade, for fade out keyframes, let's set them up. Uh, we can actually just set the 100% and skip the 0. Uh, so it will have uh, transform translate y uh, 40 pixels and opacity of 0. Let's check. So now you see it's uh, very fast. Uh, maybe we need to set up the delay, I think. So fade in delay variable. Let's set it up to 0 0.5 seconds. Uh, and maybe uh, make the play fade in longer as well. And this one just okay. Yeah, looks better. Maybe a bit faster uh, the animations. Uh, let's set them back to 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. Yeah, looks good. So, the last but not least is to work on the active card appearance. If we go to the finished project, you can see. That's, it has all these nice animations around it and uh, rounded border. Border is also animated in a very subtle way, but still. Okay, let's go back to code and create a new component. We will refactor uh, the list to separate game cards. So game card. game card dot tsx uh, export function game card and interface game card props which will extend the html attributes from div uh, because we will pass up some styles to that component uh, and then uh, it will have also active boolean whether it is active 
and it will also accept some properties from the game interface we will pick from game we will pick uh, name and uh, logo so let's destructure active name logo and props the rest of the props we will pass to the div game card props let's return copy uh, currently used card code okay let's clean it up so name we don't need uh, on click handler here Okay, we don't need the style, it will be passed down from the game cards list. Okay, and class name, we leave it, but replace this one with active. Image will have source of the logo and alt attribute will have the name. Also, we need to pass the rest props to the div. We will also move the styles from game cards list to the game card component. So game card, rename it quickly. Game card that is CSS. Make sure it's imported. Game card as CSS, and in game cards list, remove the import. Now let's use this component instead of the div. So game card and pass in the game destructured, right? Okay, let's see. So everything as it was before, but now it's refactored to a separate component, which is good. And of course we don't need this image here anymore. And instead of passing class name, we should pass active, uh, which would be equal active index, equal to index. So if this is true, then the card is active. Okay, everything looks as expected. Let's now create this sliding gradient effect. As you can see here, when we activate a card, this thing appears. Uh, okay, let's go to code. In game card TSX, let's wrap our image with div. Give it class name of uh, game image container. And in styles, whenever, uh, actually, first of all, uh, game image container let's set up some styles for it as well so let's set position absolute set width and height to 100 percent overflow hidden and set some border radius let's say 14 percent uh, so let's check should be rounded now yep looks good so now the gradient so as we've seen the gradient appears only when the card is active so for the active card let's set the game image container again and inside it after save the element it will have a display block and content of nothing uh, it will have top left zero and width and height of 100%. It will of course also have position absolute. And for the gradient, we will set the background and I'll copy over the gradient because it's a bit tricky. But the main idea is we have 
minus 45 degrees uh, angle and just playing around with transparency of white okay and some that index of uh, let's say 20 also uh, background size uh, should be 200 percent 200 percent let's see yeah there is this background let's now animate it so we set animation we'll name the keyframes uh, light ray we'll make it three seconds long with easing and we'll make it animated forwards which would mean that it will stop at the last frame and stop animating so for the light ray let's define it here keyframes light ray so at zero percent we want to make it uh, fully transparent opacity zero so it's it won't be visible at first then background position would be 100 percent 100 percent so and then at 10 percent it will become a bit visible 0.3 opacity then at 70 percent up to the 70 percent it will stay at the same opacity and then at 100 percent it will go back to opacity zero and background position would be zero zero okay let's see yeah looks great we are now pretty close to the finished ui however i think i will wrap up here because video is running a bit long and continue in the next video with the border and with the sounds thank you everyone for watching